you want to first start off with a warning. Um, do not try this at home. It can be dangerous, <laughs> harmful, and lead to imprisonment. I'm going to talk to you today about the transportation of cocaine across the U.S. border. I'll first start with cocaine and what it is. It is a stimulant drug. It is a Schedule One, which means classified that it is can cause serious harm to you if you were to take it. It is completely illegal in the U.S. And um, so going into the transportation of cocaine, I'm going to start with what I'm going to talk about, which is going to be the waste is transported by land and air across the U.S. border, meaning between Mexico and the U.S., Canada and the U.S., and just getting here by boat as well. I'm going to focus on land and air today. Here, my first one is commercial trucks, which means they can be big rigs that you see, 18 wheelers on uh, the freeways that carry food or just like direct TV little vans. They will stash the cocaine anywhere in the trucks. Here we have them in the bins that they carry that you can think would be wires or pieces for that. And other larger trucks like 18 wheelers, they are hidden inside the food area, which means if there's apples or they're transporting other types of items, they will store it in the middle of the trucks so they hide the smell from any dog sniff drug sniffing dogs. <laughs> and those will be a way to get them to not smell it so they can get past checkpoints. Another way is another larger truck, but these ones carry just in the back, and they just pretty much, these ones are more for the Mexican and Canadian border, and those are ones that just really just go work straight through the border gates, and most of the border is not what you think. You would think concrete, high, any type of that, it is actually, most of it is chain link fences, or there is no line at all for a border. So if it's not patrolled, there is an easy way for them to just drive straight through. So what they use are these, and they drive through the different fences to get through. And these usually can carry about 130 tons of cocaine at once, as well as the commercial trucks. and. From um, a DEA agent, Misha Piastro, he um, specializes in the transportation of cocaine through the Mexican border, and he says that these are the hardest ones to find because they are so easy to um, get through because they can go at a top speed of about 50 miles per hour, which they are usually on ATVs patrolling, so they can't really catch up if they do find them. And then here are just personal cars that all of us drive on a daily basis. What they do is they strip the cars completely down, they take out the airbags, they remove the seats, put the cocaine behind the seats in the airbag places, cover it back up. They'll do it in spare tire areas, they'll take out the rim of the tire, put it in there, put it back in the car. They'll put it underneath in the back of the trunk to just hide it from any place they can to remove. They don't care about any safety features that they're taking apart because they're just worried about the millions of dollars of cocaine they can get across. And the last one by land that I'm going to talk about today is drug mules, which means it is going to be humans or animals. Usually they're gonna um, swallow pellet sized um, sizes of cocaine. Usually they're wrapped in latex gloves or they're lap, um, wrapped in uh, balloons. They're gonna, they can um, swallow about 150 balloons at once is what they try to get the people to do. Really they're giants, so I mean it's like five times the size of the largest pill you've probably ever taken. And they're usually called Easter eggs. Um, 
there are like body scans that they'll do to people and they'll be completely everywhere. You can see every little dot there is of where they um, have done this. And the Easter egg term actually comes from the DEA itself, the Drug Enforcement Administration. They um, classify it as Easter eggs because they're about the same size as the ones you would get at a store, like the plastic ones. They're giant. <laughs> and now I'm going to move to ways they transport cocaine by air. And this is an ultralight. It's a helicopter-airplane hybrid. They come in two-seaters, one-seaters, and remote-controlled. They carry from like 10 pounds of cocaine to about 40 pounds, depending on how big the airplane, the ultralight is. Ultralight is the name the DEA itself gave to this um, type of transportation. And what they do is it doesn't take long trips. It usually starts on one side of the border, and they'll pretty much just fly it right over and release it at the bottom. There's like a little release button or um, string they pull drops it down and they have others on the other side there in trucks to pick it up and drive. And another one, the last one, is a catapult. These are actually one of their newer inventions, according to the DEA as well. And um, they will just, this is a seized one and those are DEA and Border Patrol agents. Um, looking at it to see how it works so they can understand and try to prevent it as well. Um, those carry from like 50 to 100 pounds of cocaine, depending on how much they decide and how big the catapult is. This will be obviously right on one side of the border, right against it, catapult it to the other side, to others, and that will, um, and they'll be there in their trucks and they'll stash it like they would in any other trucks. But that's just a way to get it uh, quickly across without anyone really seeing it. And that is, so we have commercial trucks, large trucks, personal cars, drug mules, ultralights, and catapults. Those are some of the ways that are, uh, that cocaine is transferred across the border. That is, there's also by um, sea as well. So those are just the basic, very common ways that they're transported. Thank you. Share with us your thoughts. <laughs> I really liked her um, her intro, how she started off with the warning. It really grabbed my attention. Um, I also liked how detailed she was about each thing, how she went, she explained everything, she, and like it went with her topic really well. She didn't throw random things in there at all. Um, her transitions were really good. Her slides went well with what she was saying. Um, her her conclusion could have been a little bit stronger, but everything else is really good. Okay. Well, I agree. I thought the attention device was very effective, so we know what the topic is, and it gets our interest right away. 
I do think that you should tell us what your purpose is. I, I think you need to give us a little bit more justification about why you're talking about that. And that shouldn't be hard to do. All you have to do is talk about the amount of cocaine that gets smuggled into the country every year and whether or not uh, and how much of it is actually prevented from getting in is actually seized or stopped at the border. And that would be a reason why we ought to know a little bit more about what's going on. So give us some reason to to care about the technical process of doing this, otherwise it becomes like a here's here's a general introduction to how to do this, you know. And uh, like you said at the beginning, you you want to warn people off of the uh, very notion of doing these kinds of things. Um, the you you kind of define each of the approaches. I thought that was okay. I think you could use a little bit more supporting material. I got one citation about three minutes into the speech, and then later on there's another reference to. Uh, some DEA information. Uh, I think you need to, to integrate a lot more um, research material into this. You're, you're kind of dependent on, on describing something. And here's the tough part. You're often describing something that we've already seen. You show us the picture and it's almost intuitive. We know exactly what's going on in the image. So when you show us the car being stuffed, you know, with, uh, and everything being taken out, I thought the part where you explained how people um, strip the cars down, they take out all the equipment, and then they try and find any space in there. That was good, but we're back to the idea of what can you add to this other than just the description of what's going on there to make it more interesting. Um, again, you know, how many of these get stopped at the border? Uh, when you talked about the, uh, the trucks, for instance, that might have um, things hidden inside the food, you know, the food surrounding is a way to defeat the uh, um, drug sniffing dogs. I thought that that was a, an example of an interesting piece of information and you just needed more of those kinds of things in the speech on the individual points. Uh, I saw that catapult and I immediately thought, well, that, how far can that throw things? I mean, I could throw it up. I guess it mostly it is just to get over the fence more than anything else. It's not like you're going to fling it from you know, one town and it's going to go 10 miles and land in somebody's backyard, obviously. Uh, um, and that's obviously one of those things that you can't do anywhere near a checkpoint because people would see you doing that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, you need to you kind of mention in one point, you know, we don't really know what the border is like. Remind us how long the border is and that uh, at several spots it doesn't have any checkpoints. There, you know, they only have occasional patrols out there. I could see in the background of the uh, catapult slide, for instance, what looks like a f the fence area, and I guess, see, I'm having to make the inference that that's what's going on, that that's really all the catapult's designed to do is to fling it over the fence there so your, your compatriots on the other side know it's coming. They've got to be over there with catcher's mitts and, you know, out, you know, I don't know, do you do that? You know, catch it when they throw it over or you just hope it hits the ground and doesn't break open? Uh, the ultralights were kind of interesting. That would be another one of those things that uh, we could use a little bit more information about. The, the picture was good. Um, how frequent is that? Uh, is there any way? Do they stay below the radar? Is that one of the advantages of ultralights? That kind of thing. It just seems like I'm getting a lot of lists here, and I, and I want the stories to go with that a little bit more. When you're talking about the mules, for instance, you, 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 you made that a little bit more interesting. You know, the people have to swallow these. They're really about the size of an Easter egg, and they want them to try and carry as much as 150 of these kinds of things. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing that we were excused from hearing how they recover those from the mules. <laughs> you know, I assume that's probably one <laughs> of those things that, yeah, yeah, hit the crap. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just not going to go well. <laughs> you know, uh, that sort of thing. And, the, and, and of course, <laughs> There are always uh, issues that, that happen. You know, there's a danger in being uh, a mule. If the bag breaks inside you, you're going to die. <laughs> you know, and you know there might be information about those kinds of things. How dangerous this is. You know, uh, so it, 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 I think it was pretty well organized. There, you got a lot of good visuals here. It just seems like sometimes it's mechanical, and we're just getting the list, and you need to do a little bit more than that to make it intriguing. All right, thank you.